Nine millimeter plus P is just as good as 357 SIG. I hear that a lot. My response is keep dreaming, buddy. And what I want to do today is test some Underwood ammunition. And nine millimeter plus P versus 357 SIG. Both of these have a 115 grain nozzler jacketed hollow point bullet. So this is an argument I get a lot and I haven't got it as much lately after I've started doing 357 SIG test videos. But before I started testing 357 SIG, people would always say, well, nine millimeter plus P or plus P plus is just as good as 357 SIG, et cetera, et cetera. Which never made any sense to me because, you know, even nine millimeter plus P, the maximum SAMI pressure is 38,500 PSI. 357 SIG, it's 40,000 PSI. And on top of that, it has a larger case with more case capacity for powder. So that never really made a whole lot of sense to me. But today, we're going to test these and the most fair way I can with nozzler bullets with each, both 115 grain bullets. Now our 9mm plus P is rated at 1300 feet per second. Our 357 SIG is rated at 1550 feet per second. So our rating is um, quite a bit higher with our uh, 357 SIG. You know, and Underwood loads good ammo. They have no desire to underload something to make it, you know, not perform as well. They load it about as hot as you can go. So this should be a really fair test. So we're going to go through the chronograph, see what kind of velocity and accuracy if we get at the same time. You might see I got some watermelons there. 115 grain bullets have a huge appetite for watermelons when they're moving very fast. So we're going to compare and see what kind of damage it does to those watermelons. We're going to do our 10% clear ballistic test. So we're going to go into plain clear ballistics to see what the best potential of those cartridges are. After that, we're going to do more of our real world simulation where I have four layers of denim in this first three inch piece. That represents our pectoral muscle. After that, we'll have a quarter inch medium density fiber board to represent ribs or sternum in the clear ballistics. We'll see how they compare that way. And then as always, I am going to shoot at my steel target to see what kind of practical accuracy I can get with these. So let's get started with this test. All right, first up, we have our 9mm plus P rated at uh, 1,300 feet per second. Hopefully, I can get some chronograph reads here. Ever since summer started, and there's a lot more shade out here, that's a little bit of issue. So 1,300 feet per second is our rating with our 9mm plus P. Let's see what we get. 1347. I'll read. Let me go a little bit closer to the chronograph. 1327. 1332. So all those are above that 1300 feet per second rate of velocity, so that's pretty good. All right, I had to cut away because I had to put my uh, 357 SIG conversion barrel in there into my 40. Smith & Wesson here, uh, pistol. And both of these are five inch pistols, by the way, the nine millimeter and the uh, 357 SIG. So this is rated at 1550 feet per second. Let's see what I get through my five inch M&P here. Ooh, a lot of blast. Might be a little bit too much flash to get a read. All right, it's been some time later. I'm here from the future because I wasn't gonna release this video without getting these velocity numbers to know what we're working with. So I picked up another box of the exact same ammo item 118, 115 green jacket, a hollow point with our Nosler bullet. So our, our nine millimeter plus P gave us 1338 feet per second. Let's see if I can get any velocity reads here with our 357 SIG. 1604. That's an error read, obviously. Another error read. The lighting in here, out here, is so dark and I have to put the lights on, so sometimes we get these really odd readings. But that 1600 one was correct. 1595. 1597. 1504, 1572, 1593, 1621, 1561, 1588, 1605. Another error read. So 
Yeah, with the lighting, it sometimes it gets hard out here in the summer to get these velocity reads just based on the way the lighting is. I have to set up the lighting and the light above the chronograph, and that's really the only reason here. Also, humidity, but we can see that, you know, 1338 versus around 1600, yeah, there's a little bit more velocity with our 357 SIG. So let's go back in time and hit our ballistics gel block with our nine millimeter plus P and 357 SIGs. Yeah, they do. All right, and the plain clear ballistics, our best potential gives us the best potential to not get that hollow point clogged with denim. See what kind of performance we get. So nine millimeter plus P. All right, let's hit that with our 357 SIG. Woo. We'll take a look at that. All right, so I made some sound because this is really impressive to what I'm seeing for energy dump. This is nothing that I've seen before quite like this. Um, yeah, our first three inches here, let's take a look here. Nine millimeter down there, a 357 SIG up here. We're busting off all kinds of pieces. This is not designed to be a fragmenting bullet, but this thing fragmented all kinds of different pieces all the way up and all those pieces went up to four and a half inches. That's incredible. Now our penetration with our nine millimeter, we get good expansions, 14 and a half inches. With our 357 say it's about 12 and a half inches. You gotta remember camera parallax, you know, it always looks like I'm putting my finger back further this way than line it up with the bullet because of the way this stretches it, but that's exactly right, 12 and a half inches. So we got our minimum penetration and we got a ton of energy dump. So it's a very powerful cartridge. So let's put on our denim, put on our, the MDF and see how they compare in more of our real world simulation. All right, four layers of denim, three inches of clear ballistics, a quarter inch medium density fiber board. Here's our nine millimeter. <laughs> that hits pretty hard for what it is. Let's put on our 357 SIG into that and see how it compares. All right, 357 SIG. We might get our camera knocked over. This is gonna hit hard. Let's see what this does. <laughs> Let's go take a look. And that first three inches, you know, we got the same thing going on. <laughs> Nine millimeter bottom, 357 sig on top. Just a massive amount of energy dump with both of these. Here's our impacts. Our nine millimeter expanded massive. So that's a good cartridge for what it is. Um, but our 357 SIG, it's fragmenting going through that like buckshot. We have a piece of copper stuck in this MDF. It did a ton of damage. Um, with our nine millimeter, we went to about 11 inches even. The bullet sucked back through that channel because that expansion was so huge. A 357 SIG, we had to have lost at least a third of that bullet weight and fragmentation all along this track. We penetrated two, 12 and a quarter inches. So statistically here, our penetration was almost identical in both of these shots with our 357 SIG. With our nine millimeter, you know, the MDF changed that quite a bit. So we're hitting with a lot of energy with that 357 SIG. Um, well over 600 foot pounds, no question about that because I know it's at least six, 1,600 feet per second because whenever I test underwood ammo in my five inch barrels, it's apparent that they rate them in the four inch barrels. So I'm getting always more than that. So let's take a close up look at these. Now I wanna hit those watermelons and see what kind of damage it does to those. All right, so here's a close up look at this block here and we see where the 357 SIG hit. For both the plain gel and our medium density fiber board. Just a huge amount of that uh, fragmentation and energy dump. It shows more in the spruce three inches though. Um, playing gel on the bottom with our nine millimeter, 357 SIG on top. Same thing here, 357 SIG up here. Just a whole bunch of energy dump going on. And when we look at our bullets here, um, what we see going through our playing gel 
here's our nine millimeter. I don't want to stay up straight. And here's our 357 SIG bullet here. It's really hard to tell if those are different bullets. Um, you know, one fragmented more than the other, but they look very similar. A 357 SIG just ripped off these pedals that the 9mm still holds on to. And when we go through our medium density 5 aboard, um, it's really hard to tell here again. Our 9mm over here, you know, actually expanded bigger and lost less of those diameter, which is kind of interesting. A 357 SIG through our medium density 5 aboard. You know, it looks like a little bit different uh, performance going on, but honestly, it does look similar in the bullets. They're probably the same. This one is just with our 357 SIG. It's ripping off the sides of those bullets and depositing them up here and, uh, you know, other places in the gel there. So I would say overall, I always say our 357 SIG did better. Now, when you look at these um, diameters, I haven't measured them yet, but I can just about guarantee these are well over... Our 1.5 times expansion these might be under it at least this one probably well it's probably pretty close nonetheless through our nine millimeter we had bigger expansion and that would you know say oh this one did well and our 357 either failed or did worse but you can't just take those end diameters into consideration and be like oh that's the end all be all what it did for the energy dump and fragmentation would be a nightmare for somebody hit with it. So I think it would be significantly more effective than the nine millimeter. So that's a close up look at those bullets. All right, so I decided to go for a challenge here. So I put our watermelon at 25 yards. Let's see how this nine millimeter handles it. Did I miss that completely? I think I did. Wow. All right, that made short work of that. Let's try our 357 SIG from this 25 yards now. All right, 357 SIG, 25 yards. Let's see if I can make any hits with this. Kind of what I expected. I can't hit that little piece. So now let me shoot us some steel for some fun. All right, I've had enough of this test in this day. That chronograph thing really ticked me off why I can't read that. So, nine millimeter, 75 yards. Let's see if I can make any hits with this. I pulled that one low right. I felt myself pull that. All right, so that is a very comfortable round to shoot. Almost no felt recoil on that. So it's kind of easy in a way to, to keep shooting and bring it back down on target. 357 SIG. Let's see if I can make any hits with this. Don't know where that went. Alright, so 
a little bit harder for me to hit the target with that. It's, it's, it's not really a recoil issue. It's just trying to figure out where it's hitting. I think it was hitting just a little bit right for me. So I was trying to aim a little bit left and then I think it was shooting a little bit low for me. And I'm out of ammo before I can fully dial that in. So for a 357 SIG, for the energy I know that it has, that actually has a lot less felt recoil than a lot of 357 SIG rounds. So looking at these rounds here and looking at this, you know, both of them did pretty well for what they are. I would say overall, our 357 SIG did a lot better overall. It really just, it stayed consistent with that 12 inch penetration and caused a huge amount of fragmentation in that uh, gel. So whether there's denim in the way or not, it performed really, really well. So across the board, that 357 SIG is on a different level than that nine millimeter. That being said, that was a really good nine millimeter for what it is. We might've got a little bit under penetration. I think that might be because the bullet might be a little bit different. Trying to research these rounds, it looked like the nine millimeter was the Nosler sporting nine millimeter as where our 357 SIG was our um, ASP assured stopping power nine millimeter. So a little bit different cartridge between the both of those for the bullet designs. And I think that played out in that 357 SIG actually staying more consistent with its penetration. So both of these are pretty good. And you know, but what we can say is when we look at that watermelon impact, we look at the gel impact and all of that, 357 SIG is definitely on a different level. And what makes the 357 SIG interesting versus let's, let's say 357 Magnum it's 357 Magnum and let's say 115 grain, 110 grain, stuff like that. It doesn't quite perform as good as the 357 SIG because the 357 SIG is at a smaller case capacity with a little bit less powder and blast and all of that. So what you got is a really just easy to shoot cartridge The energy jumps really hard. With the 357 Magnum, it's not particularly cons or, um, efficient to run lighter loads like that. So you can never get that lower recoil with the 357 Magnum, but we can with the 357 SIG, which is really nice to have. So comparing both of these, obviously our 357 SIG did better and nine millimeter, of course, doesn't compare at all. Um, but it's fun to see these in action. So that's what you get today. So as always, comment, share, and like, and thanks for watching.